hello everyone we are going to see design of curve beams prerequisite for this topic is basics of curve beams difference between sh uh, straight and curve beams assumptions for the curve beams and the stress distribution along the end fibers we will see design procedure along with the one problem so let's start with the problem the problem is a link of a shape made of a round steel bar shown in figure material for this link is steel with the L stress value of a 380 megapascal in tension for a factor of safety of a 4 find the dimension of steel bar so S shape link has given diameter D that is cross sectional diameter has given uh, we have to find out this diameter the 1.5 kN force is applied on this link that is tensile force and 4D is a distance from center to the centroidal axis. So we have the value of a P that is 1.5 kN that is 1500 Newton then value of a R that is nothing but the uh, distance from center to the centroidal axis or centroidal radius that is 4D then yield stress that is 380 megapascal and factor of safety of a 4 we have to find out the dimension of a bar that is nothing but the t so these are the steps to design the curve beams so in that first we have to select the material and the perm uh, or permissible stresses then we have to find out the dimensions then tensile or compressive stresses that was generated in the curve beam then bending stresses generated in the curve beam then we have to find out the resultant stresses and equate with the permissible stresses and find uh, which is unknown so next that is material selection uh, or the permissible stresses the material selection if material is not given then we have to select the material that is mild steel from the PSG page number 1.9 if material is given as the same in a problem we have to just find out permissible stresses so same by uh, failure theories we have to take sigma t permissible is equal to yield stress by factor of safety yield stress has given and factor of safety of a 4 is given so we can calculate sigma t permissible next we have to find out the dimensions so we have to find out the radiuses and other dimensions to design the curve beam so these dimensions are r o r i r n then e h i so what are these dimensions these dimensions are we can see from this image what is r i r i is a inner what is r r is nothing but the center of uh, central distance from center to the centroidal axis or we can say the centroidal radius r n is the neutral axis distance from center to the neutral axis r i is the inner radius distance from center to the inner fiber r o is a distance from center to the outer fiber E is a distance between centroidal axis and neutral axis. HI is a distance between, we can see clearly the E, HI and HO in side diagram. So HI is a distance between inner fiber and neutral axis. HO distance between outer fiber and neutral axis. MB is the bending moment about centroidal axis. And A is nothing but the cross sectional area. So next we have to actually PSG page number PSG page number 6.2 and 6.3 so on that 6.2 and 6.3 all data related to the curve beam have given so on 6.3 there are some shapes are given generally we have to see for only the round cross section and trapezoidal cross section so we have to find out the formulas or we have to take the formulas from the PSG the formulas for R and Rn so R is the central axis uh, uh, distance from distance from center to the central axis and Rn is the 
distance from center to the neutral axis so these two formula we will get from the shape that is cross sectional shape from the PSG 6.3 so from this we can find out the RO RI RN E HI and HO as shown in the display so next same we have to uh, do for the cross sectional area is trapezoidal the formula is just changed the next is we have to see the stresses induced in the curve beam if the applied force external force is applied on the curve beam then there are two types of stresses is generated one is tensile or compressive stress and second is the bending stress so bending stress is already present because it is curve beam so if applied force is acted then the tensile force or a compressive uh, tensile stress or compressive stress will generate so the uh, tensile or compressive stress the formula is the same as the force by area so that is nothing but the p by a in this case so sign convention for this if we will consider the tensile if we will see there is a tensile stress then we have to take positive value if there is a compressive stress we have to consider negative value for the stress the next stress is the bending stress so bending stress actually bending as nothing but the combination of tension and compression so at the innermost fiber and at the outermost fiber there is a tension or compression so at the to find the stresses at the inner fiber we have to take the formula or we have to pick up the formula from a design data book uh, page number 6.2 that is sigma bending for inner as mbhi by aeri and sigma b uh, sigma bending outer that is m b h o a e r o the sign convention for these two the bending stress in the fiber which is in the tension so it may be inner fiber or it may be outer fiber consider as positive and bending stress in a fiber which is in a compression we have to consider in negative so generally the value for the inner and value for the outer one five one as positive one as negative so where tension there is a positive where is a compression there is a negative when we will find out the resultant stress that is nothing but sigma max is equal to sigma bending plus sigma direct that is nothing but the tensile or compressive so so sigma bending if the value is a negative then resultant stress will um, uh, less if this value is positive then resultant stress is more so we have to take the maximum stress so that's why we have to always consider the value which is positive means the bending stress which is positive means bending stress for the tension only so that's why we have seen here uh, we have considered only sigma b max m b h i a e r i only the inner fiber because at the inner fiber there is a tension at the outer fiber there is a compression so we have not considered this formula or not considered these calculations so this sigma b max plus direct stress and next as the last that is we have to find out the diameter for this we have to equate the permissible stress to the induced stress so permissible stress that is nothing but sigma uh, sigma yield stress by uh, factor of safety uh, so yield stress by factor of safety and induced that which is we have calculated that is 6 8 6 7 4 by d square is equal to permissible that is 380 by 4 so from that we can find out the diameter t so there are only two types of problem if the cross-sectional area round 
or cross sectional area trapezoidal so there is a only prop, uh, change to find out the value of r a uh, value of uh, radius of neutral axis and hi and ho so remaining values uh, and uh, outer radius of outer fiber also so that was the to finding out the dimension is the only the different part the remaining procedure is the same thank you